I'm here to give you another Soldier 76 tutorial. I got a lot of messages asking me how exactly I made Soldier's visor, so I'm gonna walk you through that now. The first thing I did is I actually printed out Ethan Fox Cosplay's template. He has his own template for, his, for Soldier 76's mask and he decided to share it with everybody. So I owe him a big shout out for that. I wanna let you know this was a great place for me to start. I didn't follow this exactly. You can, I'm sure it will come out amazingly, but I made some changes to my mask, partly because my face is a different size and shape, and also because I wanted my mask to look a little less masculine since my soldier's female. <laughs> so the first thing I did, very similar to how I made his rifle, I ended up printing this out until it was a good size for my face. I ended up printing out a fair amount of these and then I still had to make some adjustments specifically in the band that goes across my forehead so just keep that in mind there's gonna be a lot of alterations when you do this cut it out and then he actually gives directions on here on on how exactly to contour the the mask I do want to walk you through that just a little bit um, some of this information is gonna be pretty basic EVA foam cutting, <laughs> but I think it's important to talk about so that you know exactly the different types of techniques you can do with EVA foam to get the results that you want. There are a couple of ways to get the shape you want in anything you work with. So one of those ways is obviously uh, just to bend, to bend the foam. And that's gonna give you a very rounded effect. And the way you do that is you heat up your foam without burning it. Make sure you continuously move your heat gun, both sides, and then you bend it a little bit more than how much you want it bent. I use that technique in parts of the masks, like up here, as well as around this nose area. That's just a bend. Now, another thing you need to do, and you don't know how to do with EVA foam, is stuff where, and this is uh, what Ethan Fox cosplay was talking about. So there's areas in the nose bridge right here, and then it says contour back of foam on these lines here. So what that is, is it's not where you fully cut through your foam, have two pieces, and then glue it, glue it together. It's where you almost cut through your foam, you take a divot out, and then you can actually glue those pieces together uh, to give a more peak, a peak in your, in your foam. So let me show you how to do that. This is the way that I usually do this. This is just an example. So I'll make my line, so like for instance, I'll mark where I needed these lines. So let's pretend that these, that's right here. So I have my line, that's where the bend needs to be. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go just a little bit off to the left hand side and the right hand side of that line with just a small blade. Now remember, I'm not going all the way through the foam, I am just cutting a little bit into the foam. So I'm just gonna cut into the foam on the left side here, just a bit. So there, see I have a cut there doesn't go all the way through. Then you're gonna to wanna to do that on the other side of this line. So now I have two cuts. Now what you wanna do then is you actually need to take this piece out. So then I'll go along my lines and I'll actually cut at an angle. and you can peel this part out. So what did that do? Well, on this side, it doesn't look like it did anything. But now, when you close that gap, you're gonna have a ridge, a bend, a sharper bend than if you just did it with the heat gun. So then what you do with this is you just fill this gap with hot glue and you hold it together until it keeps its spot and then you'll have that nice, nice bend there. And again, that's what I used for here and on these parts here. This was actually my friend's. He was thinking about making this mask and he ended up uh, not completing it. But you can see he'd started with that ridge. So with this, we would have just bent this with the heat gun. But with this piece, we did that cut and he filled it with that hot glue to give it that bend. So that's that technique. Two di completely different looks. The other thing I ended up doing for my mask with my foam is you'll notice that I actually have a little bit of a divot here to kind of go in more where the cheekbones are. Again, that was just a, a choice of mine to make the mask look a little bit more feminine. Uh, so the way I did that is the same way you do this, but instead of bringing it in, you actually bend it out. So you'll have a line, a crease, instead of that nice bend again. So you, 
you can really mess with things with either creases or ridges. After I got my shape and everything done, um, pretty much just the same thing again with my rifle. Certain pieces I just cut out out of more EVA foam and I just dremeled the shapes and anything that I needed, beveled the edges of things to make any of these details. You'll notice my mask is actually fairly different, particularly in the ear region where I'm missing those circular pieces. Uh, that was an intentional choice. And the reason for that was is my soldier has a wig where the hair is a little bit longer, again, because it's female. So when I put those pieces on, it actually puffed up the hair and it looked really awkward. So I ended up not putting those on and then my hair just covers that area. I did cut them out though and I put them on, they looked great. So the template was, a, was good for that. One of the, uh, let, me, oh, let me talk about these sites here. This is again, <laughs> the same way as my gun tutorial. These pieces here, this, this I guess tubing, was made just with black warbler. You roll it out and then you just snake it along in the shape that you want across the side. These little odd things, again made with black warbler, I just kind of molded it to the shape that I wanted. I actually made these two pieces connect. So this was one piece that I cut in half. So just like you would with incredibly tough, hard Play-Doh, you just make the shape that you want with the black warbler. And then I sawed it with a box cutter, which I do not recommend because I only sli almost sliced my finger open about six times. But it did work out great if you can find a better way to cut them in half. I then just warbled them on the side. Uh, a big part of this mask is obviously this clear visor. And this was a challenge for me. I, could, I was having a hard time finding a plastic that would cut for me in a way that I was happy with it. <laughs> um, I actually have a big sheet of, I don't even, I think it's acrylic plastic that I got from Hobby Lobby with I think like seven or eight different cuts of this visor and it just, they kept cracking and I just, I wasn't doing it right. I don't know what happened. But uh, what I ended up doing, and, and this was a tip from a, another friend, a cosplay friend, I went to Harbor Freight and they have face shields. They had one that was actually uh, just made out of a plastic that was very bendable. I don't know what they're used for because <laughs> uh, they're not gonna protect you from much because they're pretty flexible, but they were great in this situation. Uh, I will also have a link on where to get that specifically if you happen to have a Harbor, Harbor Freight by you or if you want to order it. Just a heads up, that face shield will look blue in the store. That's just the protective covering on it. It will be crystal clear once you take that off. The great thing about that plastic is I was able to cut it with scissors, just normal scissors. So I was able to make rounded cuts with it without it being an issue or cracking. I loved that because <laughs> that was my problem with the other plastics. So now I had that clear piece. When you do cut that, make sure you cut it to be a bigger than just this shape here. You, you do not want to use this shape off of the paper because when it gets, when it, you bend it, it actually increases the size. So you want to make sure that you know how much, just cut the plastic to be bigger. You can always trim it down. I had, so then the next step was obviously to dye it red. And to do that, what I used is I dye poly and Again, <laughs> I get a lot of my stuff from other cosplayers, which is amazing. Um, people are great. So I use that and that was from Punished Props. And I will also put their information in the description. They had a great tutorial on how to dye plastics, specifically visors. So I bought, I dye poly, I had to order that off of Amazon in red. And you dye it just the same way you would dye a fabric. So you just did it over the stove top. I dipped it in, I think it was only for about five minutes. When I pulled it out, it wasn't dark enough and you can re-dip it until you're happy with the results. Uh, worked out great. The only thing is it was still, you need to see through it, which of course, because it's a visor. But the other thing about it was I didn't want you to be able to see my eyes. I think that got rid of a lot of the, the cool effect that Soldier has, is that you can't see his expression. So I needed to get a one-way mirror thing going on. So I went to Home Depot and I got window film. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any smaller amount of this, but this is what I ended up getting. It's, it actually says mirror here. Like I said, this is the smallest I could find. So hopefully I have to make a lot more visors or I have friends that need it. But it comes in these big rolls and let me show you here. You can tell, you can see through it. But what it does is so, 
it's going to give you a mirror effect uh, when you lay it on something. So I ended up using that on my visor. Now when I put this, the plan was, so I had this nice red visor, it was to put the mirror film behind it. The problem with that was when I put it behind the visor and bent it, it ended up wrinkling really bad. So then I tried to apply it while it was bent, but then it got in the way of the light here. This is, and I'll talk about this in a second, but it got in the way of my EL wire. So I was having a really hard time making just a smooth mirror image. So what I ended up having to do actually is I had to make, you can actually see it on mine, and this gets covered up by my bangs. So again, if you're doing uh, the male version, you might have to kind of mess with this just a little bit more to hide this, but you can actually see a second visor right here. So I just cut out a second visor. I didn't have to dye it red. And I put the film in the front of that visor so that when I bent it the other way, instead of it being on the inside and wrinkly, since it was bent on the outside, it didn't give me any seams, it didn't give me any bubbling, it was just a smooth mirror. So I end up, so I actually have the two visors there, and then in between that sandwiched is my EL wire. And EL wire, excuse me, EL tape. So what that is, is it's this light here. I don't know if you can see it with all these other lights on, but um, it's, it's the same stuff that, are, that you make Tron suits out of. So you can get it in wires or you can get it in tape. So I ordered it in orange and I got mine off of a Lumi Glow. And I will also put that in the description. Um, but yeah, and, and that requires actually a pretty small battery. So this I was able actually to tuck up under my wig or you can actually somehow attach it to your mask. So that was the visor. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is attaching this visor. And again, mine's going to be a lot different because I didn't have the back piece. I know a lot of people have used those like snowboarding or the, the snow mouth covers to get that effect and then they somehow attach it onto there. Other people also do the Iron Man effect where you have this bottom piece and this actually comes off. It's a great way to be able to, you know, take a break during a convention. Just make sure you plan ahead, of, ahead for that because you need to know where your magnets need to go. Um, I decided to do mine a little differently, and the reason was is uh, one year I wore a flame druid costume to BlizzCon, and the mask was similar, I, or it was just on the front. So I couldn't put, it didn't stay on from just the weight of it being on my head. I had to ha somehow have a strap, which I did, which ran through my wig. The problem was, unless the strap was pretty tight, it would slip and fall. So I had to make it pretty tight, which gave me a headache the entire convention. So I decided to try a different method this year. Um, and you're either going to think this is disgusting or brilliant. I think it's a little bit of both. But um, the way my mask is actually held on is with a mouth guard. Um, <laughs> I didn't know this was going to work, but it did. And it worked great. Uh, like I said, right there. Uh, so I actually hold this in with my mouth. I'll show you, hold on. Yes, I can talk with that in. I got the mouth guard from Target. You put them in the microwave and it actually forms to your mouth. So it sticks to the roof of your mouth so you can talk. I have a little bit of a lisp, but the great thing about it is since it attaches that way, I can take it on and off really easily. And it didn't mess with my wig and it, it, just, it just worked. Um, so yeah. That's how I did that. So after I cut everything out of EVA foam, covered it with Warbla, did two layers of wood glue, and then for the painting, always I always use acrylic paints, and I just did the dabbing method again, just so you don't see streaks, and it just kind of blends things better. If you have any other questions, uh, always ask, and I will do my best to answer them. And if you're curious, in case you didn't know, I also have the soldier rifle tutorial, which you can take a look at as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching.